Hi, today I'm going to be going over a board that was not turning on, it had no power at all, and that was because CPU vCore was shorted to ground. So I'm going to go over why I was doing that, how I figured it out, and what I did to fix it. And I'm not going to be doing this in real time like I did with some of the other board repairs because the other technician who works here is out for two weeks on surgical leave, which means that in addition to doing all of the board repairs for my business, all of the board repairs for every other business that sends me boards, I also have to fix every single laptop that comes in for a walk-in customer. So. I got my hands full for the next two weeks, but I still would like to try to take a little bit of time out just to be able to explain these and just to keep the, the series going as I have. So on this board, again, it's already fixed. What was happening was you'd get a green light and you'd, you'd see that 1.7 volts was showing up on PP bus G3 hot, but that's, that's not 12.6. You need 12.6, not 1.7. And when I put my multimeter in diode mode, what happened is that it was shorted to ground completely. It was straight zero volts. Now, before I even got my short tester, uh, my power supply that I use for finding shorts in a motherboard, you could see what I do with that in a previous video, how to find the short in a motherboard without a $6,000 camera. What I noticed is that my CPU heatsink was getting hot. Now, the thing is, the voltage was actually being brought down. The charger is it's, it's kind of smart. If there's a short to ground that's not going to keep trying to create 12 volts into it, it lowers it to 1.7. And at that 1.7 volts, my heatsink was getting hot, which meant that my CPU had something wrong with it. So what I noticed under the microscope is that there was a little bit of corrosion in that area. Now, you're not still going to be able to see any of this corrosion because I actually I replaced the components that were at fault, and I also ran it under the ultrasonic cleaner after I did all of that and brushed it all off. But you could still see some red probe points and that's going to be what's, you know, what gives you a hint that there was some kind of liquid damage. So, yeah, in this area, you could, well, you can't see anything because I have the light turned all the way up there. The camera doesn't like light as much as I do. Yeah, you could see that there's a lot of red probe points over here. And this general vicinity look nasty. Now, if this is the CPU right down here, right? So I'm going to show you on the schematic why it is uh, I thought that CPU vCore was the fault. So let me just open up the schematic here and then switch over to it in Open Broadcaster Software. So we're going to get, come on, PDF reader. Pretend that you're running on a computer with SSDs in RAID 0. Come on, just for a second. Uh, mofo. Okay. go there we go okay so here we have the v core circuit now with the way this works is it takes the power from ppbus underscore s5 underscore hs underscore computing underscore isense and if you want to know what that is derived from if you didn't know that that was derived from ppbus g3 hot i'll show you how you can figure that out so we got this and all right, so on the first page of the schematic, I believe I mentioned this in the previous video, it tells you what all the power rails are. Whoa. Hopefully I'm not taking my video out of sync, rendering this PDF like that. Come on. Redrawing a PDF in 4K is a pain in the ass for my computer. All right, so see this? PP bus G3 hot, that's the power line that shorted to ground. You have 12.8, and under it is this, and it says 12.8. So it's a derivative of this power rail over there. Now let's go back to the page that I'm interested in and show you what's going on here. Now I already explained in a previous video how the CPU power circuit works, and I did that on a MacBook Air motherboard. So on this board, it's not two MOSFETs, it's actually one, it's two in one, so it's this, this package over here. Now, the CPU is getting really hot. Now what's going on here is instead of this making spikes for the CPU, one of these MOSFETs is shorted. So as I've said, think of a transistor like a variable resistor, like a resistor whose resistance you can change depending on what you tell it. So based on the signals going here to this gate and this gate, that transistor and that little transistor in there will decide to open. And the way this works is they open and close, open and close, open and close, open and close. And again, I showed you this in a previous video. If you want to look that up, you can look up the Air vCore video. I'm going to put it in the and the annotations here so that you can click it if you want a further explanation. The point is what's happened here is instead of opening and closing, opening and closing, one of these has, has, has dest gotten destroyed, whether it's Q7510, Q7520, Q7550. Honestly, I do not care. One of those is, is, has been blown. And what's going on here is instead of this only opening when the controller tells it to, it's open all the time. So it's actually sending this 12 volts constantly. So instead of it sending a bunch of pulses that then get converted into one volt, only when the controller tells it to, it's constantly 
only sending 12 volts in, which, by the way, you know, it's, it's a fucking miracle that this thing still has a working CPU because, again, the CPU is seeing 1.7 volts instead of whatever it's supposed to. Um, now that, that's a big overclock. I, this is Ivy Bridge. I honestly don't know off the top of my head if it works on 0.9 or 1.0 or 1.1, but the point is I know 1.7 volts is way way above what this is supposed to be working on. And every time you plugged it in, it was sending that PP bus G3 hot signal direct to the CPU. Luckily, the charger is a little smart and knows to limit the power going in here if, uh, you know, if it sees that, or the PP bus G3 hot circuit is, because if it wasn't, it would be sending 12.6 volts straight to there, and that would just be hell. So one of these was shorted to ground. One of these transistors was shorted, so instead of it being on all, instead of it being on only when the controller tells it to to send those pulses, it wasn't sending pulses. It was just sending a flat 12 volts through. So what I did is I honestly don't care to figure out which one it is. Again, as I said, these motherboards, these dead boards that I get, they they cost me like what 15, 30 bucks. I mean, I don't care. I'm gonna take all those transistors off. This is this, this job's get paying 325. So. Yeah, you know, I'm not interested in like figuring the exact transistor and then figuring out that later it's another MOSFET that's fucked up and no. Anyway, so this, this, and this then got replaced. Now here's a really, really important gotcha. Here's something that you really got to be aware of if you're dealing with these type of, if you're dealing with any type of buck regulator and one of your the transistors in the buck regulator dies. So see this over here where it says CPU IMVP phase. This is. This over here, right over here, this is the gate or for the high side MOSFET, right? So this is telling this one to open. This CPU IMVP L gate, this is the gate for the bottom one. So this is telling this one to open. So pretty much this signal over here controls the resistance of this variable resistor. And this over here controls the resistance of this variable resistor. Now, when this is going like it's supposed to, it's sending 12 volts through phase. Obviously, it's sending a bunch of 12 volt spikes through phase that averages out into about one volt. And after this inductor and the capacitors, it all gets smoothed out into about a volt. But when this thing is shorted, when this is shorted and always on, when it's always at no resistance because the MOSFET or the transistor or whatever you'd like to call it, because people love to troll when I say transistor instead of MOSFET, is, uh, is blown, then this phase over here is going to have 12 volts permanently sent to it. Not 12 volt spikes that average 1 volt, 12 volts permanently. Now where else does that go to? So CPU IMVP underscore phase 1. Watch this. This is again. This is this is very very important because this 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 is what I call part of the rabbit hole to hell. So the rabbit hole to hell is the problem that you're never ever going to solve. And this is a, this is how people get themselves in some serious shit. So over here, you see that this is the controller for it. This is sending out the signals that tell those transistors when to open. But it also uh, is connected directly to that. Now, if that is used to being one volt. And now, because a transistor blew, it's 12 volts. Don't you think that's going to screw this chip a little bit? It is. So here's, here's how, the, let me explain how this works. The MOSFET died. The MOSFET then was sending 12 volts instead of sending one. Since that goes directly back to the controller, now the controller that's used to seeing one volt on that pin now saw 12, which means that your controller is dead. So you replace the MOSFET with a good one, with a known working one. Even whether it's off a dead board or whether you bought it from mouser.com, you really think that you just fixed your problem, right? Wrong, because now you're gonna plug that MOSFET in, you're gonna solder that onto the board, but the dead controller chip that got killed by the previous MOSFET is going to tell that to constantly be on. So even if that chip is not dead, the signal going to it is going to tell it to always stay on, to always have 12 volts, not pulses of 12 volts. I mean just a straight 12 volts. So that little MOSFET that's meant for one or two or three volt circuit now has 12 volts going through it all the time, which means it's going to die. Then you think to yourself, you know what? Maybe it was the controller after all. Maybe it wasn't the MOSFET. I just replaced the MOSFET, so I know that ain't it. Let me replace the controller. But your old controller just killed your new MOSFET, so now you're going to put the new controller in, and you're still going to have the same behavior. So this is one of those things where if you don't know what you're doing, you could literally sit down for 40 hours in a room just, just, just wanting to cry and scream and throw things at the wall, because no matter what you replace, it never fucking works. The answer when a buck regulator has any symptoms like this, where it's, it's just directly shorted and instead of making pulses it's just one static voltage the only thing that you can do here is change everything at the same time so what i did over here and i'll show you in the, in the microscope is i changed everything at the same time so let me shrink myself so that you can see so this is q7510 over there that's new that is q7520 over there that is new and 
Yeah, that capacitor got shorted to it, but apparently it's 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 all one plane, so I, I get to not care. Uh, this over here is Q7550 that was replaced. Not exactly my my finest soldering job, I'll admit. Uh, one of the things I've always admitted on this channel is everything I do is 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 kind of lopsided because I don't have much uh, in terms of steady hands for putting anything or placing anything. But it's soldered there well, and it and I I always say that I clean these. Uh, a lot of people say no, you don't. You leave the mess on there. But really, I actually do clean these. Like after I'm done with it, it gets put in the ultrasonic cleaner. It stays in there for a little bit. I toothbrush the junk off, and then it stays in there a little more. Gets put in the alcohol bath gets put in the oven, because again, you, you don't want to send boards back to people with flux all over them, it's just nasty. And I also replaced the Buck uh, controller I see, and if you want to troll me on the, you know, like how not aligned my soldering is, you're welcome to, because again, I'm not claiming to be the best at it, I am not a micro solderer, I am a, an electronics repair technician. I, I solder to get my job done as an electronics repair technician. I think I'm a good electronics repair technician, but I will I will totally admit that yeah, I'm, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a soldering expert. Anyway, as I always say on this channel, if what I do does not work, you should not listen to me. You should not follow anything I do. So the next step here would be to prove that this thing actually uh, actually functions. I have been getting lazy in some of these. Like some of these videos I see, you know, where there was dead or no power. Or like I measure V-core or I, measure, I show you the fan spin and I go, I'm done. But I, I gotta, I'm going to stop doing that even if it is kind of busy. So one of the things with this board is when it has no CPU V-Core, it won't chime. It won't make that little dong when it turns on. But when it does, it will chime. So now, not only will you see that it uh, turns on, you'll also be able to hear that it dongs. Isn't that a pretty sound? 